we know that there are two major operations that we can do on vectors. We can take a vector and we can multiply it by a scalar which stretches its length, or if I have two different vectors, I can add them in a tip-to-tail manner and I can figure out the addition between two vectors. And the combination of those two major properties that I can do to vectors, those two major operations on vectors, is that I can make sense of an expression like this. I could take, say, 2 times 1, 2, and I could subtract off 3, 1. And if I wanted to treat this purely algebraically, the first thing I could do is I could look at the, the first component, that's a scalar multiplication, and I know that that's the same thing as just multiplying each component by 2, so 2, 4, and then I'm going to subtract off 3, 1 from this, and that, that this result is the same thing as 2 minus 3, in other words, minus 1 on the top, and 4 minus 1, in other words, 3 on the top. But now I want to look at how do I view this, this thing, this thing I'm referring to as a linear combination, as in where I'm doing the combinations of either scalar multiplications or vector additions, which is what this is. How do I view that geometrically? Let me first write down my, my two vectors. I'll, I'll do this one in blue first. That is the vector 1, 2. So 1 to the right and 2 up. It is that vector right there. And then I can also look at this vector 3, 1. That's 3 to the right and 1 up. It is that vector there. Now, if I want to be taking a multiple of 2 times the vector 1, 2, then in effect what I'm doing is looking at this vector here. That is the vector 2, 4. And then if I want to see how I stretch the 3, 1 vector, I have this minus 1 stuck up the front. And its effect is to flip it around like this. It's the same length, but, but sort of in the opposite direction, or the same direction, but with, with the negative length, however you want to think about it. Regardless, it goes down to a, a final point, minus 3, minus 1. And so what I'm trying to do is the combination of this vector that I have here, the minus 3, minus 1, with this 2, 4 vector. And I remember that one of the things I'm allowed to do here is add these vectors tip to tail, where, where I take that minus 3, 1, and I can move it around so its tail is going to be at the tip of the 2, 4. And so that's going to look something like this. In other words, this is going 3 to the left and 1 down at that point. And this point that I have now arisen at was, first of all, I have a, a 2 to the right over here, and then I'm subtracting off 3. So this is, in the x-coordinate, a minus 1. And then it, it went 4 up. That was because of this 4 right here. And then it went 1 down because of that minus 1. And so this is going to be 3 up. And then I can draw in that vector right there. So that's going to be my sum. So this entire thing, that entire linear combination, is going to be equal to the vector minus 1, 3 that I got over there. So in other words, what's happened here is that I had these two different vectors. And effectively, what my linear combination did was it stretched one of the vectors by 2, it flipped the other vector around, and then it gave me an instruction that I took, took those results and I added them together. So let's try to pull this idea out one level of abstraction. I want to take a general linear combination. So first of all, I'm going to consider vectors, and I'm going to write them with a hat to denote that this is some vector, it's an entire column, but I'm going to write it with x with a little hat over top of it as a sort of a shorthand, so I don't have to write down an entire column. And perhaps I have a whole bunch of them. Maybe my first vector is going to be x1, and then my second vector is going to be x2, and then maybe I have a whole bunch of different vectors. And I come all the way down here, and I'm going to have n different vectors. And then I might have different scalars in front of them. I might have a c1, I might have a c2, all the way down to a cn. And then whatever this is, maybe I'll, I'll just give it the name x. This is referred to as a linear combination. In other words, it represents a bunch of coefficients, the c1 down to the cn, these are scalars that are multiplying these various different vectors, x1 down to xn. But the picture here is just more components than the picture that we've already seen. We just take one vector, we stretch it some amount, 
and then we add it to some other vector, stretch some other amount, and we add that to another vector, stretched some other amount.